Coliseum, site of the 53rd annual ACC tournament. We're on Championship Sunday, and the Boston College Eagles in their first year in the ACC are here to face a team that's appeared in nine straight ACC championship games, the Duke Blue Devils. Good afternoon, everybody. We're glad you're with us. Steve Martin here along with Mike Jaminski. We've talked about J.J. Reddick. We know how good Sheldon Williams, Craig Smith, Jared Dudley are. There's an undercurrent of support staff, though, out on this court that has a common theme for both. Youth. Well, and they may be freshmen, but they are important to each of their teams. So you take a look at Duke and what they've been getting from their freshmen. Josh McRoberts has been spectacular. The behind the back pass on the break. He's also shown the ability he can shoot with range. We know about him, the fact that he can finish at the rim. He really gets his team a list. And then there's Greg Paulus. Paulus has been terrific in this tournament. Ten assists in the two games, only one turnover. He has been special, and he has run this ball club very, very well. The wild card for BC, Tyrese Rice. He can shoot the three, and Steve, he has been terrific. Getting into the paint area, he has attempted 13 free throws in the first two nights, and he has been a game changer for Boston College. Well, he changed that game around yesterday with North Carolina with that big half court shot that ended the first half. Mike, let's take a look at the four keys to this game. What's BC got to do consistently to win? Well, I think the one key area that Duke has an advantage is from behind the three-point line, so BC's got to get out limit that especially J.J. Redick and his looks. Duke wants to push tempo. They don't want to get into a smash mouth game with Boston College. They want to get into their legs by running. Well there's always something special about Championship Sunday. We've been here since Wednesday afternoon but nothing feels like being here on Sunday. I, I had the good fortune to play in three of them Steve and it's just the most awesome experience. I'm, I'm excited to be here with you. Well it's going to be a good one. The bands are here. The crowd is filling in on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. We'll crown a champion but we're going to take the next two and a half hours to do it. We'll be back right after this. Our officials this afternoon, Carl Hess, Brian Kersey, and Jamie Lucky, and we are underway for the 53rd championship game in ACC history. The Duke Blue Devils with the ball against Boston College in the road maroon colors. Sheldon Williams takes the first crack at it. Demarcus Nelson underneath defended a possession arrow to Boston College. It's interesting to see Boston College has two big bodies in Oates and Williams that can defend Sheldon Williams and a nice job by Oates that time and making Sheldon Williams settle for a jump shot instead of letting him get into the lane. And Craig Smith bringing the ball up for Boston College which is kind of interesting. Willis Hennon. And they'll do that against the press. Him and Dudley are, he and Dudley are very good ball handlers. This whole team is. Here's Oates at the top of sophomore. He's off to Smith. He's hit 66% of his shots in this tournament. Collis with the steal. He picked Hinnon's pocket. Zero no score. And Marcus Nelson tries to change that and won. Gets his own rebound, however, and misses. Craig Smith gets it back. Typically, see the first four minutes of the championship game a little ragged. Both teams tired playing a noon game, a third day, third game in three days. Takes them a little while to work into the uh, rhythm. Here's Sean Marshall inside. McRoberts got a piece of it. Hennett recovers the loose ball. Jared Dudley inside the ball went to Smith. Now. They say Smith touched it. Smith is alleging that Williams knocked it out with his foot. Well, the thing is, Marshall did not have a good angle to feed the post right here. He needed to take one dribble to the baseline because Greg Smith had Sheldon Williams on his back. Second turnover for the Eagles. Nice diagonal pass to McRoberts, but he's met at the rim by Oates. It'll be a foul, but McRoberts will have to get this the hard way. Take a look at this pass inside Paulus the good vision just a nice basic chest pass and this is the one thing BC will do Steve they won't give up layups they will take hard fouls in the lane I talked about the fact that they've got Sean Williams and John Oates in there there's 10 fouls and they will use them. Now Robert steps to the free throw line and we talked about him as one of the supporting members of the staff young as he is as a freshman he's played above his age and so has Paulus. Talked to Steve Wojciechowski before the game, and he feels that Paulus has really come of age, played his best game this season against Wake Forest in the semifinal. Well, and the thing that they want, Steve, is not just from a statistical standpoint, but Paulus to take ownership of this team. And it's difficult to do as a freshman point guard, especially with so many seniors, but he is, they like the way that he has grown into that role. 
Neither team has a field goal here yet, and we're almost two minutes into this first half. Greg Smith lost it off his leg with Williams defending. That's going to be a great battle. Smith has a good handle and ties it up. And that's where he can have an advantage against Sheldon Williams, pulling him away from the basket so it opens the lane up, and then he has the ability to beat him off the dribble. Tied up at two. Met during the regular season once, February 1st in Boston. Duke came up with a win, 83-81. It was 17-point lead. McRoberts baseline, the defender fell off, anticipating a foul, and McRoberts dumped it home for 2 Duke. If you're a big in this game, you can't try to buy cheap fouls. The referees are not going to call that whistle, and uh, you know, McRoberts just stayed with it. He's got long arms and the ability to dunk the ball from a long way away. Talked about Paulus and what he's done in an 18 assists and three turnovers. But Paulus has two steals in this game already. Two on one, Paulus to finish. And Craig Smith upset with Hinnant, and rightfully so. You've got to bark out when the guy is coming over to help out. But Paulus has been very opportunistic here early. Paulus has served notice that he's going to guard him all over the court. Picks him up at half court. Hinnant, though, has seen it all. That's what, that's what Duke does. See, they bait you to do something off of the dribble. And a whistle and a foul. Foul is going to be charged to Demarcus Nelson. That's his first. Nelson will get the the very tall order of guarding Jared Dudley this afternoon. Yeah, that's a key matchup, I think, for BC. And you know, they talk about uh, Demarcus Nelson. He's very strong, has long arms, can play inside, but it's a tough cover with Dudley. Let's see if they try to establish him in the post. Nelson's got one hand on the belt, so he's staying close. Dudley has great range. He's just a, got great basketball IQ. Uh, I love him as a player, and he just he doesn't look like a guy who's going to beat you physically, but just knows the game. He's posted that one. Nelson now gets doubled. That leaves Hinnant free for three. Nelson boards the miss. Six-two Duke underway. Reddick looking for his first shot of the afternoon. McRoberts from the baseline. Leads Duke with six. Blue Devils up by six. All right, it's, you know, J.J. Reddick, Matt, and both Sheldon Williams have been a little quiet offensively, but they're letting other people establish themselves. Hit it, drive, maybe could have finished. Paulus comes up with a loose ball. Duke with numbers. Greg Paulus thought that J.J. Reddick was there. And that was he was anticipating Reddick coming out onto the wing and Reddick just hung back on the play. It wasn't until Lacey that I thought Paulus might have been well served to take a shot. And nobody really stopped the advance of the basketball and he got all the way into the free throw line. DC was more worried about the guys who were running with him rather than Paulus himself. Inside here's Smith working on McRoberts on a switch and we got a foul on McRoberts underneath. Boston College taking to the offense. Let's bring in Bobby Kremis for a discussion of what they're all about offensively. Uh, thank you, Steve. You know, we know what a great half-court offense Boston College has. And in order to beat Duke, you must run your half-court offense. And, and right now, Duke's half-court pressure man-to-man -man defense is disrupting their offense. They are matching up with everybody in the paint. Here comes McRoberts on the fly to Williams for the finish. Sheldon Williams. Makes it 10 to Duke. We saw that yesterday, Steve. The, the big guys hooking up, and McRoberts has really shown in this tournament an ability to handle the ball and make a good decision. Greg Smith at the top. He talked before the game about you got to play a perfect game. He's played a perfect tournament just about. In wins over Maryland and North Carolina. We have a foul inside. A look at the top 25 teams in the nation presented by Q Motor Oil. The last. Uh, Picture look at it before the seedings in the NCAA tournament come out. Duke likely to rise, Connecticut and Villanova likely to fall. Of course, that will be depending on what they do today against 11th ranked Boston College. And Steve, a name that's not on that list, but playing better than anybody maybe in the country right now, the Syracuse Orangemen. Four wins in a row to win the Big East tournament. Never been done before. Of course, you've got to keep an eye out on Ohio State. They're playing in the Big Ten Championship this afternoon. Dudley makes the free throw. The foul was on Demarcus Nelson. That's his second. That takes a key defender off the floor, at least as far as dueling with Jared Dudley is concerned. It brings Sean Dockery on the court. Dudley with a pair. Well, you now and there's a big lineup. Now it's going to be interesting to see who matches up with Dudley defensively. Austin 
College has the same troops out there. We're five minutes in. The 53rd championship game of the ACC. It is Reddick's first shot of the day. Rebounded by Craig Smith. Reddick's had one shot. Williams has two. Out front, McRoberts with the steal. Two on one with Dockery. Three on one, Reddick makes it a party. And a foul coming up on Sean Marshall. Pretty good transition defense by Boston College that time. You don't want to bail J.J. Redick out and putting him at the free throw line. Sean Marshall didn't realize he had him covered. But Redick to the free throw line and uh, J.J. has established he is second all time in ACC history in free throw shooting in a tournament and a rare miss. That's only his sixth miss in, in this being his 12th game. That's his 54th attempt. And okay, you know you can remember just about all of your misses. Wow. Well, how many? Write it down. <laughs> Sell your stocks and bonds. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Two fans are going home here. That's their stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's stunned in the hall right now. <laughs> here is Dudley inside. Didn't have enough to get it up there. And the rebound comes to Greg Paulus. And those are opportunities against Duke that you have to convert. Paulus to try to finish, and he draws the foul. And this one's going to be on Craig Smith. You know, I thought Paulus yesterday against Wake Forest did a terrific job off the dribble and continues to do that. Kind of gets hit it on his hip right here, and he forces the bigs to come over and help. 18 points, seven rebounds, five assists yesterday against Wake Forest. The 18, a career high for this young man out of Syracuse, New York. You know, the last thing that Boston College's front line wants to do is waste fouls about penetrating point guards. I and mean, they're going to have their hands full with the front line of Duke. Into the ballgame now, Akita McClain. Now, Oates comes out. This is a deep Boston College team. McLean comes in. You'll see Sean Williams come in. And boy, did Williams have a play yesterday against Tyler Hansbrough that really set the tournament on its ear. But and this is and this is Al Skinner reacting to Duke right now, going small uh, with the key to McLean in there instead of coming with Sean Williams. 12-4. Boston College trailing here by eight. Greg Smith and Jared Dudley have been the only scorers for BC so far. Smith at the right elbow. Up and over, he finds McLean on the baseline. Nice pass by Smith. Well, yeah, wow. McLean averages over five points in just under 13 minutes, so he's very efficient offensively. I also thought it's an interesting matchup that had Sheldon Williams on McLean trying to save him a little bit and letting McRoberts guard Smith. McRoberts down underneath, it's Williams looking for Ron, and no finish, no! Lost underneath, McLean picks up the miss. What an effort by Sheldon Williams, though. Well, BC doing the same thing, guarding, electing to guard Williams with McLean. Underneath hey. McLean, this is Smith. Frank Smith can finish with the best of them. And that's what Smith, if you if you give him an angle and a lane to the basket, he will finish every time. 12-8, Duke in the lead. J.J. Reddick yet to score. Feeds into Williams, he fades and hits. Williams with four. Duke by six. And Sheldon Williams has really expanded his game offensively, and he's added that little fadeaway jump shot. He can also knock down the 15-footer squared up. Lee Malchione getting ready to check in for the Blue Devils here. Lewis Hinnant, 18 assists, only three turnovers in his first two ACC tournament appearances. Sean Marshall. Hinnant in traffic. McLean to the baseline. This is a team, Mike, that has shot 55% in this tournament in the first two games. Start, start to get their sea legs underneath them. And McLean is a guy earlier against Duquesne this year had 17 points in 19 minutes. So I talk about the production. He is really giving this team a lift off the bench. J.J. Reddick, his first three of the game and the first for either side. Puts Duke up by seven. And uh, still wearing the little wrap on his knee of the coaching staff. Really concerned when he went out yesterday after uh, banging knees against Wake Forest, but really doesn't seem to have any ill effects from that. Scored 20 yesterday after a 25 point appearance against Miami in the quarterfinal. Inside, McLean has a step on Williams. Can't put it down, McRoberts towards the miss now for Duke. 
BC not afraid to throw the ball into McLean against Williams. No double team help coming. Into the paint it goes. Williams gets the leader to go. He's got six. Well, the one thing McLean has to do, he can't let Sheldon Williams flash in front of him in the paint. That's too easy of a catch. J.J. Redick found him. The Duke faithful on their feet, celebrating Duke's biggest lead in this game. Hinnon up and over for Dudley in the paint. He's got the finish. Now, J.J. Redick, that's a tough cover. And then BC, the best thing they do, Steve, is they sniff out mismatches, and that time they found Dudley in the low post. That would be a mismatch for many guys out there. Well, he's so flexible. He takes bigs outside and, and takes little guys inside. Williams has a step on McLean. Blocked from behind by Dudley. You know, you look at the stat sheet at the end of the game, virtually every box will have a number in it for Dudley. He'll block shots, he'll make steals, he'll make assists, he'll hit threes. There's a steal by Reddick. Duke with all sorts of numbers. Reddick will pull it up and hit it. And you know what, Steve? That's, that's like a layup. I mean, you wonder about pulling up on in transition for a three-point shot. That's a layup for J.J. Reddick. That was a four-on-one break. Yep. And that's the only guy who's got the green light in that situation for Mike Krzyzewski. Hit it at the top. We're nearly midway through this fast-moving first half. Dudley, baseline. Oh, what a play by Jared Dudley. Fans, young and old, love the ACC championship final. We wondered if there'd be a full house here today with North Carolina out. No question, every, just about every seat spoken for. 23,000 here in Greensboro. J.J. Redick has so many records. Here's another one within reach. Career tournament three-point field goals made. He's one and back of Randolph Childress, who had an incredible run here back in the 1995 season. Certainly the, the, the greatest individual scoring effort in the, in the three-day three event. Here's Redick for three more. That's waved off. Offensive foul inside. Eric Botang, who came in for Duke on that very possession to give it. Sheldon Williams a break. No basket by Reddick. And it remains 22 14. Let's see how Botang reacts. Uh, not used extensively this year, but some early first half action in the ACC tournament final. Saw some action in the quarterfinal against Miami. Here's the give and go down low. The back screen. No, Dudley can't make it work. Melchioni comes up with a rebound. Well, Jared Dudley hurt Duke at home that game up at Chestnut Hill. 28 points and uh, well on his way to a big night here, even though he gets that miss. There's Reddick on the way. Back by Hennett. Reddick, goaltending. Sean Williams with the goal tell. Score of the basket, 24-14. Alltel presents the Alltel ACC trivia question. How many number three seeds have beaten number one seeds in the ACC title game? That's an appropriate question for this afternoon, obviously. Because that's what we've got. We'll have the answer for you in the second half. Sean Williams a little late getting the penetration that time. With him in the game, they feel like he's a game changer. Boston College will funnel things to him, Steve, but he had to be there a little quicker to get that shot. Tell you what, he changed that game yesterday when Tyler Hansbrough thought he had a certain dunk. And Sean Williams was there to meet him at the pass. Here's Craig Smith. Goes around Mick Robertson. I don't know how he found room to score, but he did. Six points for Craig Smith. Uh, he's very good at carving out space for himself. Jay Reddick's miss is boarded by Smith. And that's a tough thing to defend when a post player turns around and faces up on you six feet from the basket. That puts McRoberts in a bind. Iris Rice and Lewis Hennett in the game at the same time. Hennett underneath. And he forces the defense to him and draws a foul. And it's going to be on J.J. Reddick. This is what I talk about. That's a lot of pressure on the defensive player unless he's getting help. The last thing he can try to do, he can't give up the baseline in that situation. You must force him middle to his left hand. Robert just didn't have knee enough there. In it on the free throw line. Boston College, not a great free throw shooting team, although they go there much the same as Duke as in relation to their opponents. They're 67% from the line. And it scored much, but his assists are up. I think when he scores, it's a bonus, Steve, and he has really taken very good care of the basketball in this tournament. Elvin Williams back in the lineup, as you saw. That rebound replacing Botang. 
Here's Nelson back in. He's playing with two fouls. The McRoberts with a clear path. Nelson. Sometimes, and sometimes, Steve, when you're inside and you have a layup and there's a shot blocker lurking, you think about him rather than finishing the shot. Greg Smith tries to flip the defense. The ball is loose. Smith comes up with it. Coming down with it. Let's see. That's Dudley involved in all of that. Ball lost out of bounds. Or is it possession? It's a it's a hell ball. Possession Duke. That's why you're sitting here with your thumbs up. No wonder. <laughs> I just thought you were doing a good broadcast today. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to reassure you that. <laughs> it's a back at you. Eight to go in this first half. Reddick for three. Rice with a miss. He's had some contested shots. Very few open looks so far. Ivy's oh! Rice inside offensive foul, trying to force his way through. Face painting in vogue here for the championship Sunday. Duke leading Boston College 24 16. When you look at the teams who have won this championship the most, Duke, North Carolina 15 apiece, North Carolina State at 10. The Wolfpack won the tournament first three years of the ACC, haven't won a title since 1987. Mike, you've been a part of an ACC championship team or two. What would it mean for Duke to get that 16th today? Well, I'd say don't. Don't sell it short. It's certainly a number that I think the team is thinking about right now. But for, for, for a long time, North Carolina had dominated this event. The, you know, we added a couple of chips into the pot, but it's really been this last run that has brought Duke level with North Carolina. But just really two dominant programs that have played well in this event. Roberts now has it along the perimeter. Here comes Greg Paulus. Irish Rice going after him. They're two great freshman point guards. With the Williams at work inside with a reverse. Eight points for Sheldon Williams. It's now a 10 point Duke lead again. That's good patience and also strength. The double team came late when he put the ball on the floor, but Sheldon Williams still able to finish. Much stock into this lead. Boston College was down 18 on their home floor and came back and made a game of it. Dudley got a little too creative that time and lost the ball. I don't know what he was thinking about on that play, whether he thought help was coming, but he should have gone up on the same side of the rim. He had an easy finish. Skinner got a tie on today. He went with the timeless approach. The first two, I guess he's in a championship game. He's showing respect for the title. <laughs> Here's Paulus. This one from the elbow, and it's going to be Craig Smith on the rebound. Boston College is going to be much better served if they can keep Duke in the half court. That's the field goal percentage, both pretty good. Duke. Had not shot well in this tournament. 43 percent in their first two games against Miami and Wake Forest. Frank Smith inside and putting it in is going to be Sean Williams. Yeah, he's not a guy that you can throw the ball into and have manufacture the uh, points off of post moves, but he is definitely a factor on the offensive glass. What a play by Williams! Might call him a game changer. Let's see if that spurs Boston College to a run here. Reddick. Marcus Haynes is in the ball game. The freshman here is the rebound by Smith again. Rice up and over, and a finish by Haynes. What's the foul? Why the backcourt off the bench coming in, and uh, you have to live with some of Rice's decisions, but he knew that Haynes would go up and get it at the rim. Terrific play by the BC backcourt. Now take note of those plays. Williams with the stick back. Haynes with the alley oop from Rice. And now he's off with a three point play. An impressive freshman from Irving, Texas. The well, coaching staff talked about it. You know, we've got to play our best game to win today. And, and in order to do that, uh, they've got to get help off the bench. And they, they've gotten that. Injection of offense in the first half. 7 2 run, 5 on answer. Doc, we lost the handle and he gets fouled. Foul is going to be on Rice. Well, Mike, you'll be working the tournament and uh, sometime in the late hours or the wee hours of the morning tomorrow, you'll find out where you're going. Well, it's, you know, I'd love to say San Diego, but when you work, <laughs> when you work that first round, it's like uh, working in a casino. You never see the light of day. You know, it's just you're in the gym the whole time. It's an exciting four days. Where would you? Where did you open last year? Wazen. Thank you. 
Yeah, it just uh, found out you can't get there from here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, New Englanders will understand that. <laughs> Especially me coming from Maine. 28 <laughs> 21. Duke in the lead here by seven. Steve Martin, Mike Jeminski here in Championship Sunday. Smith with the basket. He's got eight. Smith. And Boston College is definitely aroused and back into this game. McRoberts got caught on the wrong side of Smith. He was on the outside of the lane, and that gave Smith a, a drive right down the middle. AJ being hampered there by Haynes. Comes back now to Malchione, who's coming in. Malchione almost turned it over. Good gear of the ball yesterday, but Williams turns it over. Unforced, really. Williams picked it up. That's their third of the day. They had five of all day yesterday. And a lot of that was Jared Dudley and harassing Melchioni. Austin College now. Down by only five. To the top it goes to Haynes. Takes it in on Rennick. Puts it up. And the rebound comes to Melchioni. Daugherty was breaking long court. But DC gets back. Here's McRoberts. Travel with the ball. <laughs> he saw a path open up. He, need, he needed one more dribble, Steve, to get to the rim. Just got too excited. The seas parted right here. Yeah, they had that one extra dribble. Good call by Carl Hess. Working with Brian Kersey and Jamie Lucky this afternoon. Duke. Up by five, gives up the ball. That's their fourth turnover here this first half. And after a sluggish start, BC has done a nice job working back into this game, making it only a five point deficit. Keita McLean is back into the ball game now, and Sean Marshall as well. Williams and Rice go out. Smith in the paint, held on. Ah! Rebound to Sheldon Williams. And right now, Steve, BC is dictating tempo. Uh, they're, they're making Duke play a half court game. There haven't been many runouts, and they've been very methodical in their offense. I think this pace and this score works to their favor. Ball is on the wing. Here's Malkion. Haynes right on him with great quickness. Smith pulls down his sixth rebound. Shooting percentage starting to come down for Duke now at 45% for the game. Haynes to Marshall. Marshall's been quiet in this first half, but he gets fouled and he'll go to the foul line. The foul is going to be charged to Duke. It's going to be to McRoberts. 28 23 timeout on the court. And it's comparing apples and oranges a little bit, Steve, because it's their first year in the league. And they, but that being said, they played in the Big East, which was, uh, which was pretty stout, and they won that league three of the last five years. John Marshall. Missed the front half of a one and one. Duke gets the rebound. They haven't had a score here in the last two or three minutes. Bench points better to Boston College and Duke. The ball lost off the end line. And Marshall's been a key component in their run to the championship. He's been a double figure scorer in the first two games and has yet to score. And he's a guy that can be a little fragile mentally if he doesn't see early success. Dockery gives to McRoberts. And Greg Paulus. Settles things down. They hit nine of their first 16. They're in a drop right now with one of their last seven. And a turnover, which is going to be their fifth of the afternoon. As many as they committed in both halves of yesterday's win over Wake Forest. And that was a tough attempt. I think you've been better served to get a shot up on the rim because it appeared that Sheldon Williams had good offensive rebounding position. Momentum up for grabs. Certainly the tempo going Boston College's way here, even though they trail by five. Offensive foul. Going to be charged to Marshall. What he did in, in trying to establish a, a position where he could receive the pass, he bumped into well, Paul. That's a great Marshall piece of officiating. Paul Hess picked it up. That's the second foul on Marshall. It is the 16 foul now on Boston College, and it is the eighth turnover for the Eagles as Sean Marshall takes a seat. Normally, you think about doing that down in the low post, but BC it's very important that they catch the ball on the elbow so they almost post up there as well to try to receive. Reddick followed by Marquez Haynes. Back to the top it's going to be Paulus. <laughs> Haynes. 
Haynes came up with some fabric on that curl. <laughs> so he's going to be called for the foul. Well, and, you know, J.J. Redick makes you do that because he is so relentless in his movement without the basketball. Uh, you know, eventually you just throw your hands up and try to grab something. Well, normally we don't hold our breath when J.J. goes to the line, but the first two today he missed. You see his line for the afternoon. Bobby Crimmins with a trivia question for us. Go ahead, Bobby. Oh, I got to test you guys, Steve and Mike. Uh, give me the last team who started 0 and 3 and won the ACC championship. I know Billy Packer would know. 0 and 3 and in the league. That's in the league, talk, right? And won the ACC championship. Oh boy, I got you guys. Would it be Wake? No. 1997, Dean Smith's last year. Oh my God. Right. Antoine Jameson and Vince Carter and those people. <laughs> Braddock gets a pair. It, so if we, if we've gotten it right. We've gotten a prize or something. Or is, <laughs> Come on, it's Bobby Kremen. <laughs> you seen his prize locker with him this weekend? A little slow to the hip this week. <laughs> <laughs> Keita McLean gives it off to Dudley. Hey! Smith inside and a foul coming up on Williams. Now we charged a foul earlier to McRoberts and it was been charged to Williams so that will be number two on Sheldon Williams. Well, and I think the argument Duke is trying to make is that Craig Smith initiated that contact. The defensive player is allowed to his vertical position down low. Krzyzewski addressing it with Jamie Lucky is going to put low lean up the only back into the game. Craig Smith to the free throw line. Smith, 18 to 27 from the field in his first two games. Take a look down inside, inside and a little, little late look out. And Sheldon Williams was shocked. He didn't try to go for the block. He takes a seat. Michael will sit the remaining two minutes and 23 seconds of his first half. Well, that's what you have to try to do against a shot block, or whether it's Sheldon Williams. Or Sean Williams, Steve, Frank, right? you got to get into their body somehow and negates their ability to jump. Dudley boards the miss and completes the play. He's got eight. Boston College draws to within four. A real lapse. You, you can't allow cheap baskets on missed free throws like that. Dudley making the hustle play. Paula splits the D, heads to the rack. McLean boards the miss. Oh, hit it. Got rid of it just in time. McLean drives, scores. Offensive foul. Take away the basket. And Paul has almost put them in a bind by not coming up with that steal. But JJ Reddick talked about a steal. Look at it now. It's a four on one, a four on three breaking situation. Reddick stepping up. Good job. McLean should have shown. He should have shot the little floater instead of carrying it all the way in. Here's Reddick into the paint. Up the only for three. Talk about the three point shot and how important it was to Duke and it's a big lift for this Duke team by William Melchione. Nine turnovers for Boston College. You saw that graphic that shows that Duke's making him pay for it. Dudley foul by Melchione. Duke foul number 13 Melchione his first team's ninth. One on one coming up for Jared Dudley. Yeah, I love this deal. I mean, we're just watching the interplay between Dudley really and Hinnett, and they, they are having an intense conversation about that last play and the last defensively. And it's like they're in a gym somewhere, just, you know, arguing, and all right, it's our ball, let's take it out. And they're very familiar with each other. Dudley's a junior, Hinnett a senior. Dudley gets the front half of the one on one. Dudley out of San Diego, California. He's had a great tournament. 28 points against Duke in the first game, a loss by two, 83-81 at Boston College and the Conti Forum. The second shot by Dudley is good, gives him 10 for the day. And Boston College now still five back. Only double figure score in the game for either team. That's right. That is at nine. Paulus at the top. Oh, there's the steal and a foul on Paulus trying to get back his position. So Paulus picks up his second. That's the 10th team foul on Duke. Have a great tournament. 
is in it against Duke in that game. They only played once. Had 12 points. Four out of five behind the arc. They were six of ten in the second half as they fashioned their comeback against Duke. Again, BC not a great free throw shooting team at 67%. They're facing Duke, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the conference. Well, and then you, you know you're also a team that gets to the free throw line a lot. So if you're going to be limited there, you must make sure you at least shoot a high percentage. That's right. There's only one other team that gets there as much, and that is Duke. Hinnon hits the free throw. And a timeout call here, a 30-second timeout by the Duke Blue Devils. And we'll return after this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Now Skinner and his team who have been involved, as Mike said, in championship games two of the last four years. They've been in the finals, in fact, four of the last ten. They've won two big East tournament titles in five regular seasons. This is a time now where teams go to sleep against Duke and BC can they all afford to do that. They've done a nice job of keeping this game under control. They must remain focused for this last minute. Minute to play. Duke spreads the floor. Runs a play. They go to red. Ten on the shot clock. He'll elevate. McRoberts will follow. Josh McRoberts with eight. Duke's lead down six again. And normally a shot taken on that side of the floor will rebound over to the left, but that one came right to McRoberts in the front of the rim. The luck pays off in championship runs. Look at that play by Haynes. Marquise Haynes makes the basket on the drive. Shot clock is gone. Wallace can walk this right down. 35-31, Duke in the lead. It's been an entertaining first half. Roberts at the top. Oh, the ball swiped from behind him and knocked out of bounds by Smith through the legs of Akita McLean. Wallace can do the duties in bounds. Keone and poor Dockery to shoot, and they won't get one away. Hinnett knocks it out of bounds, and the first half comes to an end. J.J. Redick leads the Blue Devils with 10 points. Jared Dudley leads the Boston College Eagles with 10. And Bobby, I thought that Duke got out front early because of their defense. They really played great D to start this game. Well, you know, that's Coach K's forte. Play that half-court defense. They anticipate, they double-team, and they disrupt a lot of people. And as we look at the first half highlights, you'll see that defense that I'm talking about that got this game going. Look at Bullis come up with a steal there. Great steal, great anticipation. And this next steal, this comes off a scouting report, Mike. Again, anticipation by J.J. Two easy baskets for Duke. And on the other end, you talked about Boston College, their fight. It, it, they had a chance to go down double digits, and they did, but then they came back very much alive towards the end of the half. Well, we talked about the versatility and being able to face the basket and put the ball on the floor. All right, let's take a look now at our Sonic halftime stats. And again, Boston College has shot the ball so well all tournament long. They really have, Mike, but no three-point shot. So look for Sean Marshall, Dudley, and Therese Weiss off the bench. I think they need to hit a couple of threes. All right, it's going to be a great second half. Duke going for another trophy. They won six out of seven. Steve Martin. Mike Jaminski back on the other side with the second half of this championship game. Duke leading 35 31. Steve Martin here along with Mike Jaminski. Mike, you had made mention at the start of the half just as we went away to commercial, even though Duke has the lead. Boston College seems to be shaping the way things are done here. Yeah, I thought they, even though they're behind in the score, I thought they won the half. And what I mean by that is that they dictated tempo, really played the way they wanted, keeping this game right around the 70 point mark, at least right now. I think Duke needs to change that if they're going to win and get out and run a lot more. Well, once again, Boston College very efficient in what they do, shooting 52%, as Bobby and Mike told you in the first half. Let's bring in Scott Brzezlanski and get the actually the outlook of what both coaches had to say to their teams at half. Well, the Boston College coaching staff said they've really got to cut down on the turnovers, handle the basketball, because when they cough it up, that's what's creating the easy scoring opportunities for Duke. For the Blue Devils, they've liked their defense for the most part and their rebounding. If there is one area they'd like to improve on, guys, it is offensive execution. It felt like they've been sloppy on a couple of possessions, and they can't afford to do that.
in the second half. Well, Al Skinner will go back to his original starting lineup, the lineup that he's used for all 32 games that Boston College has taken the floor at. Let's see, Steve. You know, the one thing we talked about: other people stepping up. Boston College got a nice thing from uh, a nice contribution from their bench, and not a lot of time. Recognizing some servicemen here in the crowd, they got a good, nice round of applause, standing ovation, as a matter of fact. And they got some pretty good seats here. Getting ready to go for the second half as Craig Smith gets ready to inbound. There's John Oates and. Of course, Sheldon Williams getting ready to square off underneath. Scott mentioned the rebounding. Duke has to be happy with the fact that they are rebounding with a Boston College team that averages 38 rebounds a game. Duke, not the best of rebounding teams at 30 in this tournament. Oates to the top here, Sean Marshall. And again, that tight cordon around the paint that Boston College likes to execute in offensively. So they're a throwback team in that regard. They don't play for the three. They utilize the three-point line, but their focus is in the paint. Three only opens things up for them. Here's Hinnon. He'll take one here because it was the only thing available to him. Yeah, all that being said, they ran through their offense for 30 seconds, and that's a great possession. They got down the three-point shot. Makes it a one-point game. We're in for a strong second half, I think. Here's Williams. Good defense by Oates. And that's with no double team coming. He forced the kick out. Williams hits the shot this time. He's got 10. Joins JJ Reddick and double figures. Duke now back on top by three. And that's where Sheldon Williams has had his most success in this game. The little face up jump shot from about 10 feet. DC winners of 15 of their last 17 games. They may have opened 0 and 3 in the conference. But that is a faint memory right now. Smith out top. Down low. Marshall can't catch up with the pass of Jared Dudley. That's turnover number 10. And you see, you know, you're talking about that after starting 0 3. Last year, if you remember, this is a BC team that went 20 and 0 to start the year, but then faltered down the stretch. It's reversed this year, and the coaching staff likes that trend. They're building momentum into the NCAA tournament. And turnovers today. The dunk doesn't work by Williams. Points off turnovers, Duke 14 to 1. They failed on that one. A lot early. Those three steals coming in the first four minutes. Oates with a rare three. How rare? Well, that's his 15th of the season. Yeah, that's the way. You know what? The coaching staff lets him shoot that shot. He had a, he started the Maryland game. He knocked down a three, which really built the 22 to 4 lead that Maryland never recovered from. The Eagles have tied it up for only the second time this afternoon. And Duke responds with a turnover. Mike Krzyzewski now wants a quick timeout. Full timeout here with 1737 or 1757 left to go in the second half. And Boston College has equaled the score. And of course, that was the first of nine that Mike Krzyzewski won as a coach. That particular year, it led to an appearance in the national championship game. They were beaten by Louisville as a result. Oates with back to back baskets. He's got five. Boston College now is out front. 39 37. And that's going to force Sheldon Williams to come out and honor that shot and open some things up in the lane area. Roberts looking for Williams inside. And off to Reddick, who has 10 points in this game. There's the bounce pass to the post. Look at three BC Eagles converge on Sheldon Williams. Shot clock not down to 10. Inside the paint it goes. We've got a whistle and a foul. Well, the good news for Boston College is that's only Oates' second personal foul, and they've got Sean Williams behind him with only one personal foul. So they're well positioned in this second half to defend Sheldon Williams down low. Marcus Nelson lifts a three off the inbounds. It's short, and out of bounds. Duke struggling here. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski, that was a rare timeout early in the second half that he called. He was not happy with his team's offensive execution. Going to bring Nelson and Reddick off the floor. SEC action down in Nashville. Florida and South Carolina had it in. Florida beat LSU in the semifinals yesterday. Bobby Kremens is a little, got a little side interest in that affair. Got a whistle and a foul again. And this one's going to be charged to Dockery. Sean Dockery's first. Hey, Mike, you got to give Dave Odom great credit. I mean, you know, 
They had a tough year in the regular season and he got his team to the SEC finals. Beating Kentucky too, that was a huge win. Yeah, really, really a Tennessee, Kentucky. And they beat everybody in the SEC <laughs> once during the regular season, did they not? Um, I think they did. I don't think they beat Kentucky. And they beat Florida twice. Fourth steal for Paulus in this game. He finishes plus the foul. Foul is going to be charged to Craig Smith. That's two. But Greg Paulus relights this crowd with a steal and the tie. Right, that's how he, he got this team going in the first half the same way. And the ability to take it up the floor, and he was sizing up where Smith was, drew the contact. Beautiful play by the freshman point guard. Talk about the youth on these two teams and how they defer to that from time to time to help lift it. Chance to take the lead again by Paulus goes by the way I think he might have got himself a little too amped up after that play. <laughs> Bring that heart rate down before you shoot the free throw. Here's Dudley spinning away from Paulus. Marshall gets an easy score inside. And they need to get Marshall going. That was a very unselfish play by Dudley who could have finished at the rim, but he saw an opportunity to give his teammate an easy layup. Marshall's first basket of the game. Austin College by two. Williams in the post. Oates holding his ground. Smith comes over to block and Oates gets the steal. And Paulus knocks it out of bounds. It's going to be Duke Ball. And now things are getting a little out of shape. Lewis Hennett and Greg Paulus in front of the Duke bench. And a good job, both coaches and the referees keeping this under control. Al Skinner coming down to his team. It's still going on. Al Skinner now telling his team get out of this end of the court for now. That's a great job by Al Skinner. And it looked like there was just certainly there were no punches thrown in that exchange. It looked like there was just a lot of talk. And I think what BC was taking exception to was Paulus's reaction after the play. Here's the good block on the inside. And then from out of nowhere, BC has control of this, but uh, Paulus is lurking. You see him right here come in with the play, and he knocked it off and hit its leg. And this is, that's, well, that's what I think he came up and clapped his hands. I think Hinnon felt like he was going after him a little bit. And most of that from after that is uh, just controlling the action. That's a great move by Paulus. He tapped the yes, play and oh, he touched him. He touched him. He did, and he Hinnett took except Actually, he was pushed into him on a reaction by McRoberts. He was trying to congratulate Paulus. That's why Hinnett got upset. And then after that, it's just players just trying to control everything. Look at Craig Smith. Now Carl Hess in the middle of it. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how one how the referees react to this if they tighten up the call a little bit just to regain control of the game and also how each team responds to this. I think Boston College came into this game with a, a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Not a big fan base here to witness them. And I, I don't think many people expecting them to uh, you know to have a chance in this championship game against Duke uh, and, and on this course where it would be a, a huge home court advantage. We're going an awful long time to explain which really is an unsportsmanlike foul on Paulus and a contact foul on him. Right now those stand basically as personals on each. For Paulus that would be his third. It's good by both of them to get things calmed down. Well, it's the heat of the moment in a championship game and you can see just how much it means to both of these coaches. Both teams are going to the NCAAs. Yep. But if you take the, the top seed, the automatic yeah. berth in this tournament, it means volumes to it. It, it, it dictates for, for Duke. It could bring them back here to Greensboro later in the week. But just the same, uh, it means a lot to Duke because to win a ninth, a 16th uh, ACC championship would be very special. And of course, for Boston College to win their first in their first year. So after the free throw attempts, it was, will, will be Duke's ball down there into the floor. And the sportsman like technical on Paulus sends Hinnett to the line. He gets one and now another. I think that's a key point that you brought up here. This is third personal foul with 16 minutes to go. And that, does that does that mean that he can't be as maybe as aggressive as he has been in going after steals? And his aggressiveness fuels this team. And now Craig Smith is talking like Shashevsky. We're going to get. Foul shots at the other end, and Reddick will do it. 
Reddick now with 11. Oh, his third miss of the game. Boston College by two, 42 40. Well, let's see if that diffuses anything. Paulus with a handle, Hinnant watching him. Reddick gets by Marshall. We got a whistle and a foul that's going to be on Sean Marshall. And that'll be three on Marshall, who has more fouls and points this afternoon. And you talked to Mike about the troubles that he has when he doesn't get going. Yeah, that's why I thought that that layup that, uh, that Dudley got him might have helped him. Here's the three, Reddick. Wallace can't get to the rebound. It's going to be Boston College ball. And Craig Smith helps him up from the corner. So it looks like all the relations are patched up, and you were just headed for a championship here. Timeout on the court with BC up by two. We're back, Boston College leading Duke here. We're in the second half, not just four minutes gone in this half so far. And Mike, we've just gone through a situation where we had a double technical call, contact foul on us versus an unsportsmanlike. Which team benefits more from what just happened? Well, again, I think if you're Boston College, you, you know you like the fact you you grind in this game down the tempo. You know, I think in coming out of that timeout, JJ Reddick gathered his team together. I'm sure he was talking about this is a time in the game where we've got to make it our tempo going forward. Well, it's been Boston College's tempo since about midway through the first half, and it continues here. And they have pulled ahead. Now Duke is going to extend the floor with a little pressure. Sean Dockery at the point of the offense. You see action in the second half. Florida leading by eight. One of the biggest days in college basketball when the NCAA field is selected and seated. Of course, Craig Littlepage, the AD at Virginia, the chairman of that selection committee. He has not had many free moments in the last few weeks. I bet not. He calls from College Park in Tallahassee in the interim. Boston College pulls ahead on Dudley's basket by four. They still have not had an answer for uh, Dudley either on the perimeter or inside. On the wing now, Doctors. Momentum, Boston College at this point in time. To the post, it goes to Williams. Oates doing a great job on him. There's the double late, and there's the reverse by Williams. You know, see, the double team is coming. You can't give up the baseline. You've got to send him back into the middle, but Sheldon Williams just too strong. Two point game. Boston College in the lead. Sean Marshall up. Can't make it go down. The rebound, Craig Smith. Block. Possession arrow, Duke. The landlord has spoken. And what he did was he really kept. Craig Smith under the basket. There was no place for him to go. Good piece of defense. JJ Reddick underneath. Here comes McRoberts. Steps through the wreckage underneath there. We've got a foul coming up. Oates went to the floor. Foul is going to be on Jared Dudley. No, it's going to be Oates. And, and Steve, that's what, uh, you know, if you're a big and you're playing with J.J. Reddick, you have those opportunities because the defense is concentrating so much on him coming off screens that that little slip pass is available and McRoberts gets to the free throw line as a result. Dudley picked up the foul. That's going to be his first. Roberts to the free throw line. He has it. ACC basketball is brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealer. And here comes Marcus Haynes again. And coming out, Sean Marshall. Haynes, I thought, provided a pretty good spark for them in the first half. With seven minutes, five points. McRoberts misses the second, but hustles for his rebound and lays it in and draws another foul. He said, I didn't get you last time, I'll get you this time. McRoberts gets it this time. Or rather, that is uh, Oates. Boy, he has had some athletic finishes in this game. We talked about it, the breakdown off of that, and uh, going up with his right hand, strong finish. And he hits the three-point play. Brett Roberts now with 12. Duke pulls ahead by two. Now you're going to see a deliberate set by BC. They want to take that play and take the crowd out of it. This is what they're so good at. 
Smith to Oaks for three. Almost. Wow. His second three of the afternoon. He has eight for the day. Boston College returns to the lead. 3.3 point, 3.3 average on the year, Steve. Unexpected offense from John Oates. He had seven in the win over North Carolina yesterday. To the post it goes to McRoberts. Splits the defense. Waiting there is Paulus for two. All right, Josh McRoberts just gets better and better. Recognizing the double team and talk about how sometimes big have trouble making passes out of double teams. That was a great find. Three ties and the four lead changes. It's championship basketball. It's what we expected between these two. Rising to the top of the conference as the conference season ended. Find John Oates. <laughs> As Dudley double teamed. Smith can't get a handle on the rebound. Ball is two on two. Reddick on the wing. Steve, he turned to run when that ball was halfway to the basket. He knew it was in. Two men back for Boston College, but nobody identified where Reddick was. Two proud parents look on as J.J. Reddick puts the Blue Devils on his back and puts them up by four. On 11-3, Duke won. But we're far from over in this one. Inside, Dudley and a foul on Reddick. Now that's going to be two on J.J. Here's the look. I mean, he sees him on the wing and just BC too close. You've got to give up something and you must get out to Reddick. I think even at the expense of giving up a layup, Steve, and that you have to make a decision to stop that three. Three by Dudley doesn't go. Brent Roberts gets the rebound. That's five. Al Skinner just trying to get under 12 minutes right now without having to call a timeout. 51 47 Duke. Oaks. Boy. Really showed hard in that. Trap. Here's Dockery. He just lost a handle on that. Williams will pick it up and slam it off Hinnon and out of bounds. The Robert's really gipping. I don't know. I don't know if he got his foot stepped on when he was trying to jump up for that lob. Number 21, There's a feed by Dockery on the shot. Nelson comes in. Malchione comes in. Rick Roberts gets a rest and limps over to the sideline. Jose Fonseca, the trainer, will attend to him at the end of the bench. Reddick to the top. 12 on the shot clock. Reddick. He's feeling it. Fourth three pointer, pointer by Reddick in this game. Or just a little reminiscent of the game against NC State in the finals a few years ago when Reddick caught fire in the second half. Here's Smith in traffic. Sheldon Williams brings it down. Duke flexing Knicks muscles as we approach the halfway mark of the second half. BC, this is the thing they were so concerned about the run that Duke would throw at them. Dockery at the top. Reddick finds the corner. Williams with the screen. Three straight. And Al Skinner's got to call a timeout. Marcus Haynes fell down while Reddick was going through the picks. A sea of blue bounces up and down. Timeout on the court. Duke's lead is back to 10 after Boston College had taken control of this game by Temple. Here you see he's wide open, and the reason why is because Haynes falls down, and that's that's just too good of a look. J.J. Reddick. Man, three straight three-pointers. Came in there with 438. He has five on the day. He has the all-time NCAA Division I lead. And he also has the ACC tournament career three-point field goal mark, surpassing Randolph Childress with his 33rd through 38 this afternoon. So much for the shooting slump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's fatigued all right. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Steve Wojciechowski before the game. Is this tournament been what you folks have needed to get things back right again? And, and Steve said, yes, it has been. We've gotten back to the things that we feel good about, especially offensively. An 11 nothing run. Uh, this is the guy, Tyrese Rice. If there's somebody who can answer from behind the arc, it's him. 
think Kinnett's been off the floor today. Price. Close cover by Doc Lee Reddick with a near steal on Hinnon. Hinnon into the paint. And he answers. Hinnon with six. He's got some size of point guard moving. If he gets into the lane, he can elevate and find a shot. Back JJ into the lane that time. Still plenty of time left, but the intensity level has been ratcheted up in this second half. Reddick. Let's throw back to Melchione. He's made one today. Make another there, definitely on the net. Well, they made sure on that cross that Reddick was not going to get the look. They'll leave it to Melchione. Oh, here's Smith. No way! If I leave Melchione, I'm saying, someone help, please. Craig Smith is alone. He'll go to the foul line when we come back. Duke leads BC by six. This is what your senior leadership does for you. J.J. Reddick in that altercation. Calming down, Greg Paul is getting the freshman under control, and then this is what he does best. Out of the break, knocking down the three, and then he'll get a couple more out of their set offense. A lot of screens set for him. Hands fall down, gives him a good look. Steve, five and seven from behind the arc. That a big Boston College you consider. Make him drive. He's only one of five from the two-point line, and you got to live with that somehow. But uh, there's the... All time tournament leading scores list and JJ Reddick fast on the heels of Len Chapel there as well. Yeah, a lot of things have been eclipsed by Len Chapel and Dick Hamrick this year. And JJ Reddick has been the guy to do it. These two teams shooting very well in the second half. Austin College 8 of 13, Duke 8 of 12. Craig Smith on the free throw line. Boston College may look at their free throw shooting after this game as they're undoing. 8 of 14 right now, Mike. Wallace with it out front, but they're shooting 55% from the field, 20 of 36. Wallace back on the floor, and so is McRoberts. JJ pops out. Oh, McLean with a big cover on him. They make him drive. Yeah, I think that's the best option. Get up in his grill on the three-point line and make him put it on the floor. Hit it. Blue by Paulus. Here's Dudley. Two screens for Paulus to run through. That frees Dudley. Erased by Williams. BC wants a goal 10. Instead, they'll get called for a foul as Rice gets the foul at midcourt. I, I've said before, Steve, that what J.J. Redick does for this team offensively, Sheldon Williams does for them defensively. And that might have been goaltending. I, I, I think that was at least at its apex, but, but not called. And, uh, but he gives them their swagger on that end of the floor. He allows their perimeter players to take chances and put a lot of ball pressure knowing that he's sitting there behind them. Now the wait is over. Big Paulus is going to the free throw. This is the one on one. Right to the front court, Dockery in tow. 57 51, Duke leading Boston College. 53rd championship game, near steal by Paulus. And it recovers. To Smith, he got the advantage. Tries to dunk on Williams, the block. Sends it out of bounds. It's going to be Boston College ball. Wow. <laughs> Two All-Americans challenging one another at the rim. I don't know that Williams got a piece of it. It's just that <laughs> Smith found himself climbing that hill and still climbing at the top. He didn't have enough to get it down. Eleven on the shot clock now for the possession that will continue on Dudley's inbounds pass. Over in the corner, it's a tough place to it's a tough place to make an entry play. Weiss comes out and gets it. Eight on the shot clock. They'll put up a three. Smith gets the rebound. Quickly back up and in. Thirteen points for Craig Smith. Great offensive rebounding position for Smith. Opposite of where Rice was shooting, the ball came right to him. Now Boston College is on a 6-0 run, and they're within four of the new Blue Devils. 
J.J. Redick out front, sees Williams. Oh, they let him play in the paint. I guess so. Rice spots hit it on the wing. One point game. Steve, this is a very difficult team to make a huge run on and put away. Uh, they're just methodical and they have shown a lot of resolve over the course of the season. 30 second timeout taken here by the Blue, Blue Devils. It's Boston College now that is on the run. They've erased all but one of Duke's 10 point lead. But you look at it, hitting a 43% shooter, so he is capable from behind the arc. And Rice making the nice kick out, and uh, it just left alone on the wing. Speaking of guard play, let's bring in Bobby Kremens for a comment on that 1970 game. <laughs> that was a great one, but I tell you what I love about Boston College is just like their coach, they never lose their cool. They, they just can't be put away. All right, Bobby, they just they just keep coming back at you in a variety of ways. And, and again, they've managed to slow this game down to their own speed. And, and I think that helped them in that uh, altercation in front of the bench, too. Here's JJ. This is the outside shot. Craig Smith comes away with a rebound. Now that's nine. Got a whistle and a foul by Dockery. Momentum shifting back and forth. Duke had it for a while. Now Boston College has got it going. Uh, that, that is the 15 foul. And it's the move to it. They got Williams, a shot blocker inside, but they also, with Rice and Hennett in the backcourt, it's been a good combination for Boston College in this game. Duke is in the bonus right now. And they've got a foul to give. Smith to the corner, Dudley. It's always a great option. Wrap around pass. It's going to be Duke ball on the turnover. That's turnover number 13. The Boston College Eagles making a game of it. They trail Duke by one. Duke and Boston College toe to toe for the ACC championship. 57 56 Duke. This trip around the ACC brought to you by Chevrolet. Our semifinals yesterday. Duke ex moves on at the expense of Wake Forest. Boston College. The dramatic win holding off North Carolina after building a 14 point second half lead. Boston College 61 percent in that game. They've shot 55 percent for the tournament and they haven't hurt themselves today at 53 percent. Yeah, consider that as I saw Roy Williams after the game and he couldn't remember when a team shot 61 percent against one of his ball clubs. And they are validating that with an exceptional performance today against a very good defensive ball club in Duke. Duke shooting 47 percent. This game has been everything we thought it would be in intensity and strategy. Both teams enjoying great runs. All knocked out of bounds by Tyrese Rice. Low scoring game down in Nashville and Florida up by four. 47 43. Well, another uh, coach that can really dictate temp tempo and, and Dave Odom. Sheldon Williams in on Smith. Well, Williams puts the ball up and in. Sean Williams was defending. And the foul is charged. Take a look at this again. I don't know that this just kind of slipped in, and sometimes that's the best result. It just came out of his hands and went right into the rim. Fourteen points for Sheldon Williams. Foul to Sean Williams. And the three point play gives Duke a four point edge. Plenty of time left. 7.33 to go. The 53rd ACC men's championship game. Duke, winners of 15 ACC tournament championships. Boston College bidding for their first. No strangers to tournament finals. Here comes Hennett for three. Wow. That's his third triple of the game. He has 13 for the afternoon. It's a one point Duke lead. We'll talk about it. They don't take a lot, but they shoot a good percentage. They're five of nine in this game, only one behind Duke. And uh, JJ Reddick has accounted for five of their threes. Well, they're 15 of 29 in this tournament. Williams, all rejected by Sean Williams. Wow. Talked about him being a game changer. He had a similar play against Tyler Hansborough last night. That block 
last night happened in slow motion. But this one happened very, very quickly. Jared Deadly out front as Boston College bids for the lead. Six and a half to play here in Greensboro. Screen from Sean Williams. Seven on the shot clock. Tip back. Paulus has it and a foul on Rice. And Steve, that's the second time it's his fourth personal foul. And two of those, he's tried to stop the break by getting a pick in the backcourt and picking up a silly foul rather than getting back in transition. 19 foul on Boston College. Billy Packard, a big part of that run in the early 60s with Wake Forest. And Vic Booth has coached teams in the early 60s for Duke. You know, we talked about Len Chapel and about how J.J. Redick is about to eclipse his scoring total. That was achieved when Wake Forest was doing all that damage back in the early 60s. All the second shot doesn't go, and he knew it from the time it left his hand. He knocks the rebound out. Duke prevails with a two-point lead. Wallace checks out. Demarcus Nelson checks in. Nelson is the only Duke starter to not have scored in this ball game. Him and into front court. Dockery fall. Into the paint, nice interior passing, Dudley to Smith. Well, Steve, it is hard to make a good three-foot pass in the lane. It sounds silly, but in Boston College is the best at it. And that was a great look by Dudley. Fourth tie of this game, Mike, 61 all. JJ for three, contested by Marshall. And a loose ball foul charge. Looks like it's going to be Demarcus Nelson. That's his third. You know, it's funny with this team, you see the look and uh, unselfish there, unselfish there, layup. And this is a Boston College DC that gives up layups for other layups. Hinnant down into front court. All the way in, uncontested layup. 15 for him. And BC is back on top, 63 61. 528 left to play. Williams turns. Dudley boards to miss. Boston College looking to maybe take this opportunity to build a lead. That's been a key defensive move, getting Sean Williams on Sheldon Williams. Timeout call by Boston College to talk things over. They've got the lead right now, 63-61, with 5.13 left to go. Let's watch this move by Lewis Hinnon. Yeah, you just got you, you got Dr. turned around and nobody's stepping up. McRoberts has to come up in that situation and try to stop penetration. Let's take a look at our Chrysler game summary. It shows Boston College up by two. The shooting percentage. Boston College has had it going all tournament long. That 46% by Duke is the best they've shot in this tournament. Reddick leads Duke. Points in the paint heavily in favor of BC. Hinnon with 14 points in the second half. 63 61 Boston College in the lead we have 513 left Steve Martin along with Mike Jaminski Bobby Kremens Mike Hogwitz Scott Kozlowski the whole crew is here Smith up and over for Williams wow, has, has he made a difference in this game Steve well designed play coming out of the timeout the pick and lob Reddick on the wing, guarded there by Marshall. Four point BC lead to kick out for three from Nelson. That's his first basket of the afternoon. Boston College lead trimmed to one. They need somebody to step up because they're really looking at Reddick and trying to get the ball either out of his hands or make him drive. Here's Hinnon. Wow. Lewis Hinnon. 17 points for Lewis Hinnon all of it in the second. That's a wild play. I mean, that's, he exploded to the rim. 67 64. Boston College, fourth wild to play. Reddick, steal. Started by Marshall. That was a good move by him at that time. Instead of making ill advised long pass, calming things down. All lost on the wing. It's going to be Boston College ball. Timeout on the court.
Boston College forcing its way in front. The lob to Williams, and then the finish by Hidden, who had 17 second half points. BC by three. Boston College with a three point lead, and the Eagles have the crowd buzzing. That guy, especially, 16 of his 17 points have come in this half. And of course, that last dramatic dunk. And what about the effort of Craig Smith? Smith now is three assists away from a triple double. You see his 15 points and 10 rebounds, but Mike, he's averaged five and a half assists in this tournament. And had seven assists, came three assists to try of a triple double against Maryland in the first round. Down low, Craig Dudley got ahead of Nelson. Williams helps him recover, and here's the steal by Reddick. Nelson, oh, Williams. Inside, good defense by Sean Williams, and they're going to call a foul on Sean Williams. Well, I'll tell you what, they're letting the big boys play inside. Dudley trying to get this call. Ends up on the floor. Play goes the other way. Good find inside. Sean Williams comes to stop the initial one, and then McRoberts comes in. The foul called on uh, Sean Williams on that play on Sheldon Williams. And it's the double bonus coming up now for Duke. Williams will go up for two. <laughs> <laughs> I had this feeling it was over. Was it the drool on my chin? Yeah, that was, that was the, no, the big drool. Where I was. <laughs> <laughs> Wallace out front after the rebound. Duke by down by two. McWilliams met at the rim. Two candidates for this foul. And it's going to be on Marshall. That's his fourth. Fourth foul on Marshall. Team over the limit. Rick Roberts for two anyway. Well, it is clear uh, easy layups are going to be hard to come by at both ends of the floor in this game. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom, Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the ACC is prohibited. And then you see our announcing crew. We're Glad to you're making making some time with us here. The ACC championship game and it's certainly been an outstanding one. Josh McRoberts. Boy, both teams have left some points on the free throw line. And we've got a lane violation. That wouldn't have counted anyway. It's going to go back to Boston College. BC still leads Duke by one. 57, 67, 66. It's final in Nashville, Florida. Team that probably everybody thought was going to win the SEC at the start of the season prevails over South Carolina. Maybe some LSU fans will take issue with that, but that's all right. Hit it out front. Dudley posting up on Nelson and scores. 14 for Jared Dudley. Boston College's lead is now three. He's been the mismatch inside that BC has been able to exploit. Hasn't been as dynamic on the perimeter as he was yesterday against North Carolina, but he finds ways to help his team win. Nelson inside. Drop Drop Roberts. That's all he could do, Mike. Well, what do you do? You show the, the shot blocker what he wants to see the basketball. Great pump fake by McRoberts, and then the up and under finish. Pons to the floor for Duke. Crowd to its feet. 2.28 to go. One point Boston College lead. Hinnon finds Smith. Smith finds Pater. He's got 17. Boy, can they manufacture points in the paint, Steve? Great screen roll that time. 71 68. JJ Reddick has it scored in about eight minutes. Here comes Nelson. It goes to Reddick for three. And what happened, Steve? They got the switch underneath, and Craig Smith found himself on Reddick, and there was no way he could stay with him. Ties it up at 71 with his sixth three pointer of the afternoon. 153 to go. Timeout on the court, and we'll see JJ at work again. There's the look. He's running. He's got Craig Smith on him. Smith looking inside. It all takes that little brush screen. Does it late to get a hand out on him? 
It just perpetual motion and eventually wears you down. 23 points for J.J. Reddick. Here goes his sixth three-pointer. Much to the approval of mom and dad. And Doug Collins standing beside them. It's all knotted up. With a minute 53 left to go. The career all-time ACC tournament leader is J.J. Reddick. But there's still work to do for the Duke Blue Devils and for Boston College. There's what's left, timeouts, BC 2-1 to one in that category, possession arrow on their end. BC not yet in the bonus, but they will on the next foul. Rice in the front court, nobody's sitting. Dudley. Sean Williams out front, still plenty of time. 15 on the shot clock. Hit it. C. Smith. Oh, what a play by Williams, but a foul. The foul is on Sheldon Williams. That's going to be three. And what a gutsy pass by Hinnon out front. He saw that Smith had him sealed on his back and threw the lob. Right here, look at no ball pressure on him and sees that there's nobody behind Smith. He had plenty of area to go and get the basketball. What a great feed. Austin College has shown so much imagination with this offense. It is something to watch. They are going to be a factor in the NCAA tournament. Well, the one thing the Duke coaches talked about, Steve, is they're almost lulling you to sleep, and that's what happened. It didn't look like that possession was going anywhere, and Hennett found Smith. Smith now with 18 points. What a tournament that young man has had. He had 23 against North Carolina, 21 against Maryland. And if you're looking at candidates for the Epic Case Award, you got to look at him, you got to look at Reddick. Those are the two guys. Boston College by one. 19 for Smith, 73-71, Boston College. Well, we talked about the freshmen early, Steve, but it's the seniors late who are making the plays. Yeah, Paulus and Mick Roberts and Rice and all these guys may have helped them here, but it's these guys that get it done. And that's unguardable, completely unguardable. Duke by one, 74-73, a minute six to go. What a final. Dudley to Williams. Under a minute to play. Duke must remain vigilant. Hit it's the reason why. Collins with a big rebound. And he called timeout as he was headed out of bounds. What a play by the freshman to save that possession, but look at this. I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. You can't shoot from that far out. J.J. had to find the opening. He did just then. And then Paulus at the other end off this rebound. Calling timeout before he left the field to play. <laughs> Not easy for him to do. What a heady play for that freshman who has grown so much. Boston College has been ever resourceful at finding ways to score once they get it into their end. As Mike said, they've just got to prevent the score at this end. But Duke has the ball. A game that has been unbelievable. Five ties, six lead changes. It's shown the strengths of both teams. We've seen the inside play of Craig Smith and Jared Dudley. We've seen the outside play of J.J. Redick. And we've seen the skill and the sheer athleticism of Sheldon Williams inside. And credit BC there, they put themselves in a position to be in this game in the last minute, keeping the score in an area that they're comfortable with. Duke will have to inbound all the way in on the end line. Boston College will make it difficult with the press. 
McRoberts, and he gets fouled. Foul by Williams. Now, the rationale there is one, you look at Duke's free throw problems that they've had today. McRoberts is five of six. But Duke is a team 15 of 23. You know what? Throw those percentages out. It's the last minute of the ACC tournament tournament final. And this is a you know they took a chance with him. He's 64 percent on the year. Nick Roberts. Solid. Well. The thing here Mike is he makes this one. It's still just a one possession game for Boston College. You're looking at now, you're looking at Hinnant and Marshall as your three point shooters. Also, Dudley. Oh, he missed, and Dudley comes away with a rebound. A three will win it. But there's about a half second differential shot to game. BC will call a timeout, one of their two remaining. It's a short timeout for Al Skinner. Boston College will be in the one on one shoot, Duke foul. Shot clock 0.7 behind the game clock. If Boston College would take this down to the last thing before scoring. They leave Duke with very little time left. Here we go. Bryce called her by Dockery. Dudley to Smith. Smith doubled, lost the handle, puts it up, tipped around. Williams boards it. And a foul immediately. They had a look. Their senior All American had a good look. They were going for the tie inside. I think uh, Williams had a good chance for that tip in, but. Uh, Sheldon Williams, the good defense on Craig Smith, not letting him get to the rim, and then coming up and cleaning up the miss. It's still only a two-point game, and Williams is two of three on the free throw line. He typically is a 73% free throw shooter. He can put this thing out of reach. His parents looking on. That's the big key right now for Duke after this. No three-point shots. You've got to defend the arc. Williams with 17 on the day. Hit him both. Hit it. Up in the front court. Eight seconds left. Hit it for three. Got it. Boston College has a timeout left. Wow. That was, that was the one thing the Duke bench said no threes and has Hennett been any good in this game. Wow. 20 points for Lewis Hennett. That was McRoberts almost made a critical error there by fouling and diving but Reddick got caught behind him. And that's a that's a great three Stephen that you take off from behind the arc but it's also a closer shot and you go by the defense. He got a good screen at the top from Sean Williams that took Reddick off the job. And now with 4.4 seconds left to go, Duke will have to inbound the ball against pressure in the end zone. Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke Blue Devils break the huddle. Boston College does the same at the other end. What a game we've had for the 53rd ACC Championship. And now Duke will have to inbound with 4.4 seconds left to go. The Roberts can run the floor. It will not cover the inbounds guy. It goes to Paulus and he gets fouled. And a second and a fourth ticked off. And Paulus will go to the line. And Steve, even with two made free throws, plenty of time. I mean, you're not going to get it all the way up the court, but you can get a good look at the three. Three, 
course, if he misses this, if he makes the first and misses the second. But well, either either way, you have no timeouts left. The ball won't. The clock won't start until the ball is inbounded and touched. Yeah, that's, that's a big gamble to take if you miss a little, choose to miss the second. That's right. Ball is going up there to get two. Three pointers today. Duke has nine. Boston College has six. Absolutely. They're going to leave. They're going to put everybody back, and McRoberts is going to shadow the guy taking the ball inbounds. Prevent that easy pass. They have to deny, I think, hit at the basketball somehow. Make somebody else make the play. He's been too good. Make Rice make the play. Hit at the 19. It was 20 points in the second half. Hollis, no. No timeouts now. Here comes Hinnick. Hinnick for the win. Oh, wow. Craig Smith falls to the floor, helped up by Sean Dockery. But the Duke Blue Devils are flying in the rarefied air of 16 ACC Tournament Championships. In a final that satisfied all of our needs for a great tournament championship. Here's the luck, and that was, they did not try to make that miss, and that was a, that was a good, good look at it by Hinnon at the end. I'll tell you what, is, is there any value added by BC coming into this conference? Oh, I'm telling you, they have been outstanding, obviously, in football, and they've done the trick in basketball. They've just won. Basket shy this afternoon, but the Duke Blue Devils have done something no ACC team has done before. Appearing in their ninth straight tournament championship, they've won seven of the last eight and 16 overall. No other ACC team has done that. The final score, Duke 78, Boston College 76.